Hello, everyone. It's Pastor John from Portland Metro Assembly of God Church, Portland, Oregon. It's Sunday, December 20th. It's almost Christmas, and we're looking forward to celebrating our Savior. Today, I want to share with you a message uh, entitled, The Reasons Why Jesus Came. We're going to unpack that out of 1 John chapter 4, and uh, would love to have you take your Bible out and turn with me. But uh, just before we get into the word, I'd love to have you pray with me. And we're going to pray for those five things that we've been agreeing uh, in prayer about for many months now. And we're just believing God for great things. Let's bow together in prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together in your word. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness, your mercy that are all new every morning. Lord, and we, first of all, want to pray for unity in your church. Oh God, that your church would be unified together, seeking your face, crying out for repentance and for revival, God. Bring unity, we pray. Lord, we also pray for a spiritual awakening. Lord, as, as your church unifies, it will bring a powerful awakening. It will bring a, a hungering. It will open the eyes of the blind and, and it will it will deal with the confusion of the enemy. We pray, Lord, that your church will walk in authority and power. Lord, we pray for healing and protection from the pandemic. We started making this, these videos months ago because of the pandemic, and we pray, God, that you will come and heal our land. Lord, as we repent, come and heal our land. We pray, Lord, for peaceful and productive resolve to the unrest, to the lawlessness around our nation, in our cities and in our nation. Lord, we need your healing touch. We need your Holy Spirit to bring a conviction and to bring uh, changed hearts, God. Bring, bring peace, God. Bring truth. We need your truth. We need your word, Lord, more than anything. We pray, God, for wisdom and grace for our national, state, and local leaders. We pray these things, and we pray your blessing on our time together in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read for you and with you out of 1 John chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Verse uh, 18, such love <laughs> has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experience, experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Friends, uh, a lot to unpack in those great verses. And we want to just touch on five reasons why Jesus came from First John. Um, as we look back on 2,000 years uh, since Jesus was physically here, 
there are times when we hear the question, how do we know that Jesus came? Well, there are a lot of reasons <laughs> uh, that we know Jesus came, but I want to focus in on two. First of all, his coming was announced by many prophets over thousands of years. It was prophesied. We were told that Jesus was coming and he came and we have a record of that in lots of uh, pictures, types, and promises. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 15 and 21, there's the, the telling and the prophecy of the battle between Jesus and the devil and the covering that God would provide to take away the sins of the world, which is a foreshadowing of the continual spiritual battle that we are in and that the covering of our sins would be taken care of by our Lord Jesus Christ. Also in Genesis chapter 4, there's the story of God accepting the offering of Abel as he presented a lamb and the rejection of his brother Cain's gift as he brought crops that he had raised in the field. This is a foreshadowing of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, giving up his life so that we could know forgiveness and everlasting life. In Exodus chapter 20, we see the blood of the lamb painted on the doorposts and on the lintel so that when the death angel passed over the house, the firstborn of Israel would not be killed. A foreshadowing again of when we put our faith in Jesus, his blood covers and protects us and washes away our sin. In Isaiah chapter 7, the Bible says a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 53, uh, verses 5 and 6, it says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins, he was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our, our own, yet the Lord laid on him the, the sins of us all. Yes, friends, there are many prophecies. That's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just a, a few of my personal favorites that tell us of the coming of Jesus over thousands of years. Uh, by by many different prophets telling us that Jesus was coming. Then the second uh, evidence and, and major kind of evidence that we have that Jesus came is that it is recorded in natural human history. In the four Gospels and in the letters, we have the, the historical record of the Savior's birth and life. But in addition to that, we have the independent testimony of the uh, historians of the day that recorded the fact that Jesus did in fact come and be born and live on this earth and, and minister and die and, and be raised uh, up after uh, being crucified and then walking around uh, presenting himself to 500 people and more and doing lots of miracles. Uh, yes, we have the recorded human history. So let's look at some reasons now. We've got we've got the the uh, the prophecy information. We've got the historical information that we know he came. But let's talk about five reasons why he came. First of all, he came to be our sin bearer. First John three verse five says, "You know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins." And in him was no sin. In fact, friends, I want you to focus in on that word appeared. It's very important. It refers to the existence of our Lord long before uh, he came in Bethlehem's manger. Uh, that was not his beginning. The Bible says that, that he has no beginning. <laughs> he uh, <clears throat> existed with God uh, since forever. And and then uh, when the time was right, Jesus came, born 
as a baby, uh, was raised up and uh, came to be our sin bearer. The second reason why Jesus came, and this is another very important reason, he came to destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8 says, <clears throat> The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Uh, Satan is the one that brings sin and suffering to the human race. Yes, our choices do that too. And But Satan is the major presenter, major causer of sin and evil in the world. All sickness, heartbreaks, murders, wars come because of the presence of evil and the presence of Satan in the world. Jesus came to destroy Satan and to restore us to all that we've lost through Satan's evil workings. And Jesus did it by his death and resurrection. Friends, let me remind you, at the cross, once and for all, Jesus uh, defeated Satan. He is a defeated foe. The battle has already been won. And we, we live in the glory of that. Jesus came and bound the strong man. And one day soon, Jesus will destroy Satan and his evil forever. And we look forward to that and we celebrate that. And one day we, we will get to be a part of that. Satan's working hard to deceive people and keep them in the dark and keep them away from Jesus. And uh, But he is, and he is also the attacker, the accuser. But he is a defeated enemy, and God has given us authority over him, over all of his power, and over all the power of the demons and devils and evil friends. Because of the cross, because of Jesus, we have authority. In fact, uh, Romans 16 verse 20 says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. He's a defeated foe, and we're going to crush him by the power of God, friends. The third reason Jesus came is he came to give us eternal life. First John chapter 4, verse 9 says, This is how he showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. He has given us life and both abundantly here in the in the now, but also uh, abundant life in eternity. Jesus came to do that for us, friends. This is our, our greatest need because the coming of sin had brought death on us and on the whole human wraith, spiritual death, which is separation from God. We were spiritually dead, but God loves us, and he sent his one and only son into the world so that he would pay the price for our sins. Friends, this is the good news. God has given us eternal life, and we can walk in that and receive that and begin living in that. All we have to do is believe in Jesus. Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. We are thankful for that free gift of eternal life. The fourth reason why Jesus came, friends, is he came to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. First John 4, verse 10. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. In other words, Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid it all. Uh, there is nothing you can do to pay for your sins. Jesus has already done that. He gave his own life. He paid with his own precious blood to wash away all of our sins so that all we have to do is ask and, and our sins are forgiven. Our sins are washed away. Jesus not only came to take away our sins, but because he did that by offering himself as the sacrifice for our sins, he did what the holiness and righteousness of God required, giving him every right to be them to be merciful to sinners. And we're thankful for that. All of our sins have been punished in the person of Jesus Christ. He took our punishment. He, he was our substitute. Jesus bore all of our sins in his body on the cross. 
our Lord Jesus has once and for all dealt with, with the sin question. And because of our trust in him, we now are totally safe and secure. There's nothing the devil can do. He can throw all of his, his uh, ugly accusations and, and say all manner of evil things against us, but none of that works. None of that will stick because Jesus has already paid the price. Oh, friends, knowing that we are free, knowing that our sins are washed away, is the most wonderful beyond words assurance of our salvation and our freedom. The fifth and last reason that I want to share with you today is that Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. Oh, friends, First John chapter 4, verse 14. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Oh, that is the good news. Jesus is the Savior of the world. He is the one that we have been waiting for. The work that Jesus did on the cross was completely and exactly what was needed for all people, for all time, everywhere. He is the Savior of the world. He's the universal Savior. The message that the angels gave to the shepherds on that first Christmas day is still true. Luke chapter 2 verses 10 and 11, the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. The, friends, uh, we have a Savior. Does that mean that everyone will be saved? wish I could answer yes to that. The truth is that no, not everyone will be saved, but, but salvation is available to everyone, even the most evil, even, even those who are trying to earn their, their salvation that cannot be earned. All we have to do is accept this free gift from God, accept this Savior. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Friends, Jesus is also well able to save all who come to him. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, Therefore he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Jesus is well able, friends, to save you, to save your loved ones that are a, a long ways away from Jesus. God is able. Jesus is able. To be saved, we must call on him as our own personal Savior. Everyone has to call on him personally. We can't uh, ask God to uh, save and forgive uh, we can ask him to save and forgive others, but they have to personally invite him. They have to personally ask him. And so we need to pray that their heart will be warmed toward the Lord and toward the gospel, toward the good news that Jesus is the only Savior. Romans ten thirteen says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He is our Savior, friends. God didn't leave us abandoned and alone. He gave us a Savior. Jesus came to be our sin bearer. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to give us eternal life, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to be the atoning sacrifice. And he came to be our personal Savior. He came to save the world, but he also came to be our personal Savior. If you're watching this video today and if you have not yet asked Jesus to come into your heart, you can do that right now. And he will forgive every sin and he will pour out his love all over you. Let's pray right now, shall we? Father, thank you for this time together in your word. Lord, may we remember and enjoy and be secure in the fact that Jesus is the Savior and he came to save us. And all we have to do is ask him and he will come in and 
forgive our sins and be our Lord. Lord, we pray for loved ones and friends that don't yet know Jesus. Lord, we pray that during this Christmas season, they will come to faith in you, Lord. Give us openings to talk with them. Give, give us favor with them. Lord, open their hearts to your good news and open their hearts to people, even strangers that will come and share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. We ask all of this in Jesus' holy and lovely name. Amen. Thank you for being with us on this time in the Word of God, friends. And until next time, we pray God's favor and blessing on you and your loved ones. And a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. God bless you. Bye-bye.